We can't hear you, mate. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our council meeting on the 20th of October 2021. Sorry, I've just had a pop up come up. Okay. Live streaming. As a uh, meeting chair, I give my consent for this open council meeting to be streamed live, recorded and published online in accordance with council's live streaming policy and governance rule. The chair and or CEO have the discretion and authority at any time to direct the termination or interruption of live streaming. Such directions will only be given in exceptional circumstances where deemed relevant. Circumstances may include instances where the content of debate is considered misleading, defamatory, or potentially inappropriate to be published. Attendees are advised that they may be subject to legal action if their actions result in inappropriate and or unacceptable behaviour and or comments. Thank you. Virtual meeting statements. The COVID-19 Omnibus Bill 2020 provision allows cancel meetings attendance by electronic means. The requirements of the meeting being open to the public is satisfied by the meeting being streamed live to the council's internet. In the event of technical issues with live stream, the meeting will be adjourned. Councillors are deemed as being in attendance if they can hear proceedings, they can see other members in attendance and can be seen by other members and they can be heard to speak. A friendly reminder to, uh, if you have your mobile phone beside you, to turn it off or silent. Statement of acknowledgement. Basco Shire Council acknowledges the Bunurong as the traditional owners and custodians of the land and waters and pays respects to their elders past, present and emerging to they hold the memories, the traditions, the culture and the law. Basco Shire Council celebrates the opportunity to embrace and empower the Aboriginal and or Torres Strait Island communities in their diversity. Bass Coast Shire Council will create opportunities for future recognitions and respectful partnerships that will honour the traditional owners and custodians, the Aboriginal and or Torres Strait Islanders. I now ask Councillor Whelan to do the Councillor Statement. All members of this council pledge to the Bass Coast Shire community to consider every item listed on this agenda based on the individual merit of each item, without bias or prejudice by maintaining an open mind and disregarding councillors' personal interests so as to avoid any conflict with our public duty. Any councillor having a conflict of interest in an item will make proper prior disclosure that the meeting will not participate in the debate or vote on the issue. Thank you, Councillor Whelan. Present and apologies, we are all present. I have no apologies. Declaration of interests, I have Councillor Ronnie Bauer and Councillor Letitia Lang have both declared a conflict of interest for agenda item H14. And when we get to item H14, they will step out of the room. Confirmation of minutes, council meeting held on the 15th of September, 2021. Um, can I have somebody move and second that the minutes of that meeting be confirmed? Councillor Kent and seconded Councillor Rooks. All in favour? Councillors Tassari, Holstead, Lark, Rooks, Kent, Bauer, Lasser, Whelan and Lang. Carried. Okay, brings us to public question time. And we have quite a few today uh, and we have a big agenda. So I've made, a, uh, I've made a decision. There are 26 public questions listed in this agenda. The first 11 relate to finance and capital works matters. As chair, I have determined that a response to these questions will be provided in the minutes. In addition, these submitters will be invited to a meeting with our CEO, our General Manager of Business, Trans Business Transformation, and our Chief Financial Officer to discuss their questions in more detail. So I am um, quite uh, happy to extend that offer to 
the question askers who were Graham Jolly, Gay Jolly, Claire Diffie, Michael Goose, Melissa Dagg, Kim Lightfoot, Stacey Dagg, and Anne Adolphson. So I thank you all for your questions, and we will be in touch with you to make that uh, that meeting take place. Okay, question 12 is from Claire Diffie, and it's uh, regarding the red bin waste. Would Council please provide waste bin, waste red bin disposal tonnage figures for each year from 2011 to 2021? Miss Wasty. Through the man, a total of 73,877 tonnes from curbside red bins was taken to landfill between 2011 and 2021 financial years. The annual breakdown will be provided in the minutes. Thank you, Ms. Weiss. The question 13 is from Melissa Dagg, and it's uh, also on the waste contract. Would the Mayor please advise the names of the elected councillors that have been given to, to read the current waste contract? Through the Mayor. Where councillors are involved in the award of the contract, i.e. if it is over a certain value and awarded during their term, they have provided detailed feedback and a recommendation from the tender evaluation panel. Councillors do not see the detailed contract itself during this process. Due to the commercial incompetence information contained within a contract, council does not recirculate contracts that have already been endorsed by council in a previous term. Question 14 is from Kevin Griffin, and the topic is the Inverloch foreshore erosion. Due to dangers posed by rapid and ongoing foreshore erosion at Inverloch's Esplanade Rotary Park, Council recently removed two picnic tables. Why is this Council not taking urgent action to protect this popular picnic and parkland area from further loss caused by the advancing erosion? Ms. Wasty. Through the Mayor, this area is captured in the Regional Assessment Strategic Plan that the Department of Environment, Land, Water and Planning are leading and are responsible for. This includes assessing how assets close to the shoreline can be protected. Council recently removed some seating in the area that had been impacted by further coastal erosion in the interests of public safety. Question 15 is from Heather Blackmore and it's regarding the Inverloch Transfer Station. The Inverloch Township has expanded and the transfer station is surrounded by residential properties. It is also located in an environmentally sensitive area, Screw Creek and the inlet, and the green waste has the potential to be a fire hazard. What is Council's long-term plan for the transfer station? Through the Mayor. Council is aware of the pressures on the Inverloch Transfer Station, given its unique setting and ongoing development in the vicinity. Council is committed to ensuring residents have access to waste management and recycling facilities that are fit for purpose and compliant with relevant regulations, including environmental management. Where significant changes to the location or operation of a facility are deemed necessary, such matters will be brought to Council for consideration. Okay, now council has received five questions that relate to the south, uh, sorry, to the Surf Beach Road. Each of the questions will be read out and the people will be named and one response will be given at the end. An individual response will be provided to each of the que question in the minutes. So question 16 is from Sue Walton. There's two parts to the question. What further steps do council intend to take other than a few totally inefficient speed means dust signs to alleviate the concerns of residents in regard to health and safety on the, our newly formed gravel roads. The dust is already horrendous and we're not in the busy season as yet. Question two, why are the residents of Surf Beach not given the same consideration as the wildlife on Churchill Island? Churchill Island has some very effective speed humps installed. I have travelled over them and they are certainly require you to slow down, unlike signage, that the majority of the road users ignore. Question 17 is from Miriam and Derek Kershaw. Two parts to the question. No, question one, for, early, for nearly three decades, we have tolerated the speeding traffic and dust in our home. This has been exasperated by the recent removal of the road dust suppressant. 
What is Council proposing to do to minimise dust and slow traffic? And question two, Batman Street is a long, straight, unsealed road that leads to the Surf Beach public car park. There is currently no provision for safe pedestrian children foot traffic. What is Council proposing to do to slow the traffic and keep our kids safe? Question 18 uh, is from Kay and Moan Mayor, and there's two parts to the question. Dust is detrimental to human health. The less speed, less dust lines erected by Council at Surf Beach and Sunderland Bay are an acknowledgement that the speed causes dust. When will Council take action to calm traffic in, in order to lessen dust and protect the health and residents in our area? Question two, Batman Street and the Esplanade at South Burt at Surf Beach are dangerous for pedestrians, cyclists, and those pushing prams because of deep drains and speeding cars. These are major access roads to our beach car parks. Traffic will increase in summer, especially after lockdown is lifted. When will Council act to calm traffic? Question 19 is from Suzanne Peel. And it's uh, two parts of the question as well. Can we maintain unmade roads with one way roads, winding roads, and vegetation either side? to slow cars in Surf Beach? Can we maintain swales for survival of frogs and surf in Surf Beach and Sunderland Bay area? The greater, the greater recently would have destroyed a lot of frogs. Question 20 is from Lou Pecora and it's got two parts as well. Why is the council accepting responsibility for creating a dust problem by the removal of the dust crescent seal but doing very little to slow vehicles down when it is obvious that speeds greater than 25 kilometres an hour create dust, even on the mild days of temperatures in high teens. In question two, why won't Council accept the nebulous speed means dust signs are ineffective unless backed up with a target speed of 25 kilometres an hour? Heaven forbid in the upcoming dry period with temperatures in the high 20s and mid 30s and a significantly more traffic. Ms. Wasty. Through the Mayor, Council is currently investigating road management options for areas in Surf Beach. The options will be considered by Council at a future meeting in response to a recent petition. Initial community engagement for a potential future road and drainage upgrade in Surf Beach and Sunderland Bay will occur in November. Community will be encouraged to provide their feedback on concerns related to roads, drainage, footpaths, traffic and environmental issues. Based on initial feedback, planning may proceed for a future upgrade and community will be further engaged to develop options that would address infrastructure issues. Okay, question 21 is from Heather Blackmore and its topic is Townsend Bluff and Broadbeach Estate. Residents have affirmed the importance of paths and tracks as part of a healthy lifestyle. At Prom Island Estate, we have no direct access to the beach and have to travel to town via the highway. Has Council plans to link this area to Townsend's Bluff or Broad Beach Estate? Ms. Wasty. Through the Mayor, there are no current plans to construct pathway links from Prom Island Estate to Broad Beach Estate or the Bluff. There is a footpath connection from the Prom Island Estate to the foreshore via Old Ford Road, Cassinia Street and Meanderry Drive. Question 22 is from Greg Fort and its uh, topic is Ramsey Boulevard Surf Parade Road. When will Council upgrade Ramsey Boulevard Surf Parade Road in Inglot? For such an important showpiece thoroughfare, it looks like something you would see in a third world country. Ms. Wasted. Through the Mayor. Ramsey Boulevard is being maintained in accordance with Council's road management plan. It is within renewal intervention levels and based on performance and condition mon monitoring, renewal works would likely occur within five to ten years. Question 23 is from Kevin Griffin and uh, it is public question time. Without precedent and with no explanation to the August Ordinary Public Council meeting, the Mayor excluded one of my submitted public questions from being presented to the meeting. Is it the Mayor's intention to continue preventing submitted public questions which displease him from being presented to future public council meetings? Ms. Wasty. Through the Mayor, 
The chair may disallow a question if they determine that it breaches any of the clauses listed under 53.6 of the governance rules. Council wrote to Mr Griffin and advised that the question had been disallowed by the Mayor under section 53.6 of the governance rules on Wednesday 18th of August 2021. A further response was provided on the 31st of August 2021, specifying the relevant sub clauses under which the question was disallowed. There is no requirement to read a disallowed public question at the meeting. Question 24 is from Mike Cook, and there's two parts to the question that's regarding freedom of information. Can the Mayor confirm that there is a freedom of information request lodged by the Bass Coast Residents and Ratepays Association for the Waste Management Contract? as stated in a letter to the editor in the Phillip Island Advertiser, 22nd of September. In part two, can the Mayor also confirm there have been many promises by the CEO and council staff to comply with the request all at no avail, as stated in the letter to the editor in the Phillip Island Advertiser on the 22nd of September? Through the Mayor, the Freedom of Information legislation does not allow council to release this information. Question 25 is from Paul Del Bosco, and its topic is, there's two parts of the question, topic is Bass Coast Organisational uh, Cancel Function Chart. <clears throat> Does there exist an updated version of the Shire's Organisation Cancel Function Chart that is more recent than the 2018 PDF shown on the Bass Coast Cancel website? The current PDF document on the Bass Coast website, Bass Coast Organisational Cancel function chart does not list the individual's names attached to each function. So will the Bass Coast Cancel update the website to, prov to provide this missing information? Miss Wasteman. Through the Mayor. Council thanks Paul for raising this with us. The website has been updated with the current chart. The intended purpose of the chart is to broadly describe where responsibility is assigned for many functions of Council. Question 26 is from Andrew Marston at the Bass Coast Ratepayers and Residents Association, and its topic is public question time. Clause 53.6 of Council's governance rules states a public question may be disallowed by defining nine categories under subclause 53.6.1 through to 53.6.9. To provide constructive feedback to questioners, can Council undertake can Council undertake to always clarify which of the nine categories that has been triggered when the question is disallowed? Ms. Wasty. Through the Mayor, Council's current process when a question has been disallowed is to provide a written response to the questioner explaining that it has been disallowed under Clause 53.6 of the Governance Rules. We will ensure relevant subclauses are included in this process. And thank you, everybody, for uh, taking the time to send those those uh, questions in. And I do hope that uh, the names read out to start regarding the financial questions do take up the offer to meet with the uh, financial team and also the CEO. Okay, petitions, joint letters, deputations and correspondence. I have none. Notices of motion, I have none. And Mayor and Councillor's report, as has been on... Um, since we've been doing these uh, meetings live, um, all reports will be sent through and loaded up with the minutes onto the website. Okay, brings us to reports requiring cancel decision. Item number H1, Community Vision 2041, to be introduced by Mr Mack. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I am pleased to present the Bass Coast Community Vision 2041 to Council. The vision was developed through a deliberative engagement process, including Bass Coast's first community panel, a group of 43 individuals who are demographically representative of the municipality and independently selected through an EOI process. Through a series of workshops, the community panel have taken great pride in representing their community to, de to develop the draft vision statement, community aspirations and supporting priorities. It has been prepared to meet the requirements of the Local Government Act 2020 and sets out the vision, aspirations and priorities for Bass Coast for the next 20 years. A public exhibition process was undertaken with 76 online submissions and nine hard copy submissions received. There was strong support for the vision statement with over 80% of respondents agreeing that it reflects the Bass Coast community. 
The vision is rec recommended to council for adoption. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Matt. And I'd just like to um, jump from protocol for a second. And uh, on behalf of all the councillors, I'd like to thank each member of the community panel for their hard work and your dedication. You've done an outstanding job at uh, visualising our Bass Coast towards 2041. The Bass Coast Community Vision 2041 is a real significant piece of work for our community and will help shape our future for the next 20 years. In the, it's the first time that a document of this nature has been wholly developed by the members of our community, and I'm really proud to say that Council has accepted the panel's recommendations in full. That's a credit not just to our panel, but also to every member of the community that attended one of the drop-in sessions, completed the survey and provided feedback on the draft. Our community vision is highly reflective of the things that matter to our community and I'm pleased to recommend it to the Chamber and I'd like to uh, personally thank everybody who took the time um, to take part in the, the community panel. It's a job well done. Can I now ask for somebody to move and second this recommendation? Councillor Rooks and seconded by Councillor Lang. Councillor Rooks. Thank you, Mayor Tassari. Um, yeah, I concur with everything you've said there, um, just that um, it has been a fantastic piece of work that's been constructed and also all the, the information that um, Mr Matt gave towards it. I think what I wanted to say was um, two points. One is that the giving us a vision for the future makes it a lot easier for us as councillors to understand what people want in the sense that a lot of the work that we do isn't just for the immediate right now, but we look into the future to see for the planning of what we want it to look like. We now understand what we want it to look like because this group of 43 people um, have done such an excellent job in uh, explaining what it's going to look like. Thank you to the people that also provided feedback to those 43 people in that panel because they, as Mr Max said, concurred that they, uh, the 43 people the panel had it right. The vision statement and the community aspirations also closely align to our council plan, which is coming up as the next item. So again, they got it right, and it's gonna make so much easier for us councillors to make decisions into the future. So thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Rook. Councillor Lane. Uh, thank you very briefly. I just um, also wanted to echo the thanks to all of the council, um, the community members who were involved in this amazing project and um, to really commend them for sticking through it all despite not being able to meet in person um, and still jumping online and being able to contribute and dedicate a real amount of their incredibly valuable time. So thank you very much for that. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Councillor Lane. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this recommendation? No, I agree. It speaks for itself. Uh, Councillor Rooks, would you like to summarise or put it to a vote? To a vote, thanks. All in favour of the recommendation as it reads. Councillors Tassari, Holstead, Lark, Rooks, Kent, Bower, Lesser, Whelan and Lang. Carried and well done. Item number H2 is the Council Plan 2021-2025, an annual action plan to be presented by Mr Mack. Thank you, Mr Mayor. The Council Plan is required under the Local Government Act 2020 and identifies Council's priorities in working towards the achievement of the community vision during its four-year term. The plan has been developed following broad community engagement, commencing in March 2021. This included drop-in sessions at nine locations across the municipality, discussions with local schools and community groups, online question and answer sessions, and discussions with the Bass Coast Community Panel. Draft strategic objectives and strategies were placed on public exhibition for a period of four weeks. 23 responses were received, and these submissions have been used to inform the final council plan. The council plan will be delivered through the achievement of key actions set out in the annual action plan 2021-2022 and the delivery of future annual action plans. I recommend the Council Plan 2021-2025 and Annual Action Plan 2021-2022 to Council for adoption. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Can I have somebody move and second the recommendations? Councillor Holstead and seconded Councillor Rooks. Councillor Holstead. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to highlight a few things. Um, firstly, that it seems fitting that our environment is listed as the first objective, and I'm proud to be part of a community who have such a strong emphasis on the need to ensure policies and strategies adopted by this council are keeping our environment at the forefront of decision making. Um, as chair of the Bass Coast Arts and Culture Community Advisory Committee, I'm also pleased the arts has been recognised as an important contributor to community health and wellbeing through participation and is also essential in provision of community enjoyment as part of the pla uh, place, place making portfolio. Um, I too would like to thank those who have put in written submissions offering suggestions and those suggestions have been um, from the elimination of herbicide applications in partnership with our farmers to the possible use of granny flats addressing affordable housing and the desire for good design through planning. I thank and congratulate the Community Engagement Panel for their contribution. It's a plan that has something for everyone and um, one that provides a strong vision for the future of Bass Coast. In relation to the annual action plan, I'd like to acknowledge the importance of the strategies being proposed in this plan. And I look forward to this work being completed. That is in the revised economic development framework, the revision of the Phillip Island to San Remo Visitor Economy Strategy 2035, the Settlement and Housing Strategy. This work will, continue, will contribute to a foundation of continued improvement to our local planning documents. Western Port Ward remains hopeful of the state government delivering on the long awaited distinctive area landscapes and what that means for the protection of township character and environmental sen sensitivities around sand mining in Bass Coast. Um, so I, I'm really proud of the document and um, I commend it to council, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Holstead. Councillor Rooks. Thank you, Matt. Sorry. As a first-time councillor, I don't think I appreciated the amount of work that goes into a council plan. And um, to all those people that have been involved, congratulations on putting this together. I think it's a very uh, sensible and practical uh, council plan for us for the next four years. So thanks to the community, of course, because you built this council plan. Thanks to the staff for their input and also to the other councillors where we got involved as well. I feel that the uh, council plan is one, some people have told me that it's a very green plan. I'd like to use the word sustainable and uh, I'd like to give a de definition of sustainability. Sustainability, one of the definitions out there is focus on meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their needs. I believe this council plan does that. It focuses on the right here and now, but it doesn't leave people in the future wanting or missing out on what we've got right now. So congratulations to the community for building such a great plan. If you look at the six objectives in our council plan, protecting our natural environment, it's an obvious one that looks at sustainability, like sustainable development, another objective. But even ones like growing our economy, we're looking at renewable energy and leading for our community. That's where our climate action plan comes in. So it's a fantastic plan, one that focuses on now, but also the people who will be in our community in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rooks. And before I ask anyone else if they would like to talk, I'll just confirm, Councillor Holstead, that you can hear and we can hear you. Yes, I can. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Not sure what happened there. All good. Okay, would anyone else like to speak to or against the uh, recommendation? No? Councillor Holstead, would you like to summarise or put it straight to a vote? Straight to a vote. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you. All in favour of the recommendation as it reads? Councillors Tassari, Holstead, Brooks, Kent, Bower, Lesserve, Whelan and Land and against? Councillor Lark, carried. Item H3, Bass Coast Healthy Communities Plan 2021-25, to be presented by Ms Kennedy. Thank you, Mr Mayor. The purpose of this report is to present the final Healthy Communities Plan 2021-2025 to Council for adoption. This plan requires Council to develop a, the Public Health and Wellbeing Act requires Council to develop a Municipal Public Health and Wellbeing Plan every four years. 
Council's new public health and wellbeing plan has been titled Healthy Community Plan. The plan has been developed following a thorough consultation process, process which was aligned to the development of the council plan and the community vision. Officers have also worked closely with South Gippsland Shire Council and the South Coast Primary and Community Partnership to develop the final Healthy Communities Plan. Four key priority areas within the plan are, one, creating healthy lifestyles. Two, improving mental wellbeing. Three, supporting affordable housing. And four, improving equity. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Kennedy. Can I have somebody move and second the recommendation? Councillor Lane and seconded. Councillor was sort of got in there just. Councillor Lane. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as a member of the um, South Coast Inclusion Network, it's been great to see um, how council officers and councillors have worked alongside community members and stakeholders to deliver this plan. Council exists in a challenging space when it comes to um, making sure our community is healthy because we're not in the direct service provision of health services but we have a huge role to play in advocacy and ensuring that there are services available to fill in the gaps um, that have been recognised um, over time in our community. Our health outcomes are not crash hot, um, especially when we look at our domestic violence rates. So it's great to see that this Healthy Communities Plan addresses that and also um, how our healthy diets. Um, so I would endorse this, wholly endorse this plan as I think it works incredibly hard to create an inclusive and healthy Basco Shire so that everyone feels like they belong. And um, I'd like to um, encourage people to support it. Thank you, Councillor Lane. Councillor Lassard. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, yes, yet again, another uh, good report, very comprehensive report and um, a much needed one. We've just seen in the last two years what a healthy community means, uh, the support services and our partnerships together with those health ally groups. So I think this is a, a, an excellent report. Uh, the development of the action plan will be something that will be put in place and I certainly uh, endorse it as well. So thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Lassert. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this recommendation? No? Councillor Lang, would you like to summarise or put it to a vote? I'd like to put it to a vote, thank you. All in favour of the recommendation as it reads? Councillors Tassari, Holstead, Lark, Brooks, Kent, Bauer, Lassert, Whelan and Lang. Carried. Okay, item number H4, Access, Equity and Inclusion, Plus Coast 2021-25, to be presented by Ms Kennedy. Thank you, Mr Mayor. The purpose of this report is to present the final Access, Equity and Inclusion in Bass Coast Plan 2021-2025 to Council for adoption. The plan has been developed following a thorough consultation process, which again aligns with the development of the Council Plan and the Community Vision. The plan brings together the priorities identified by the Access and Inclusion Advisory Committee, along with service providers and the community in line with legislative requirements and state government strategic directions. Some of the key priorities identified in the plan include implementing universal design for all new community spaces and facilities, improving employment opportunities for people with a disability, strengthening engagement and consultation with the disability sector, and improving recognition and support for carers. Thank you, Ms. Dears. Thank you, Ms. Kennedy. Can I have somebody move and second uh, the recommendation as it reads? Councillor Lark and seconded. Councillor Rooks. Councillor Lark. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Council's Accessibility and in Inclusion Plan 2021-25 outlines our commitment to be more accessible and inclusive for people with disability. If we are to achieve this commitment, we have a responsibility to address the barriers that hinder the access of many Bass Coast residents and other stakeholders to the opportunities and services that will allow them to live the way they want and get the support they need and deserve. The Disability Action Plan sets the standard for how we want to operate as a truly inclusive work, policy and service environment. 
the community-wide plan sets out a range of actions to reduce barriers for those with disability who need to access services and facilities and enhance employment opportunities. The plan has been developed closely with the community and actions have been established in, consult in consultation with the disability sector. The Disability Action Plan exists to ensure we turn a critical and strategic eye to what we are doing to reduce barriers, promote inclusion, change attitudes and practices, and improve outcomes for people with disability when dealing with council and our community generally. Thank you, Councillor Lark. Councillor Rooks. Thanks, Mertatari. I attended the um, the forum, I'm not sure when it was, maybe six months ago, um, with regards to uh, the Disability Action Plan that held at Silverwater Resort. And uh, it was very well supported with, um, I guess, up to 100 people there at least. One of the things that, um, I noted, among many things, was the there was a desire from many people to try to change the name. So instead of calling it the Disability Action Plan, they wanted to change the name. I think the people got it right, and I think we've got it right with this new name change. To me, the Disability Action Plan creates segregation. It talks about us and them, and I don't think that's appropriate. So the new title, Access, Equity and Inclusion Plan, is far better. Access meaning universal design for all people, not us and them, just but for all people. Equity, fair for all people. And inclusion speaks for itself. It says that we all have a sense of belonging and a purpose within the Basco Shire. So I think those people that attended that forum will be pleased that we have a new name and I know it's going to be hard to get used to. I know Councillor Lark missed it a few times, but it's now called the Access, Equity and Inclusion Plan and we should be proud of that change. Thank you, Councillor Rooks. Would anyone else like to speak to or against? Councillor Kent got in just and then Councillor Wayne. Thank you for that, Mayor. Uh, look, there's a, a couple of sentences within uh, this briefing that takes it down to the basics and really stands out for me. And one is the plan contains key initiatives for council to ensure people with a disability are included and can participate fully in all aspects of community life. And also the council's role has changed. We're, we're no longer a a key service provider, but we have to advocate for improved services. And I throw in there the old phrase that if you're prepared to walk past something which you know is wrong, then that's the level of service you're prepared to accept. So as councillors and council, if we see something that needs improving, we must advocate and we must get it fixed. And that's going to be a lot of work in the in the future. We all know there's huge issues there which need to be addressed. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kent. Would anyone else? Oh, sorry, Councillor Lang. Very briefly, thank you, Mr Mayor. I just wanted to point out that um, last week was National Carers Week and I wanted to um, commend all of the carers that dedicate their time countless, countless hours and their lives to um, supporting other people in the community. And it's great to see that um, that supporting carers and respite services for people with a disability is included in the plan. Well said, Councillor Lane. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this recommendation as it reads? No? Councillor Lark, would you like to summarise or put it to a vote? Yeah, in, in closing, Mr Mayor, I would like to acknowledge the Access and Inclusion Committee members, uh, consultants, council staff, disability clients and their service providers and carers for their valuable advice and contribution to the plan. So thank you very much to all those involved in bringing this plan to fruition. Thank you, Councillor Lark. We'll put it to a vote all in favour of the recommendation as it reads. Councillors Tassari, Holstead, Lark, Brooks, Kent, Bower, Reserve, Whelan and Lang carried. Item number H5, long-term financial plan to be presented by Mr Mack. Thank you, Mr Mayor. 
The Lloyd Government Act 2020 requires all councils to adopt a long-term financial plan by 31 October 2021. The LTFP is prepared to align to the Council Plan 2021-2025 and supports the ongoing provision of a range of core council services and an ambitious capital works program. Pleasingly, the projected financial sustainability indicates provide confidence that these services and works are affordable and do not compromise Bass Coast's sound financial position. A public exhibition process on the draft plan was undertaken and seven submissions were received, with these considered in the development of the final plan. All submitters will receive a response to their submission and I note that the report attachments will be updated to include an additional submission that has been received by all councillors. It is proposed to maintain the currency of the LTFP by reviewing the plan on an annual basis. The LTFP is recommended to Council for adoption. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Mr Mack. Can I have somebody move and second the recommendation as it reads? Councillor Holstead and second with Councillor Whelan. Councillor Holstead. Thank you, Mr Mayor. There has been some community commentary on the way in which Council reports on its finances and I'd like to firstly start by saying that Council has a highly competent and professional finance team whose work is cross-checked by a highly competent and professional audit and risk committee. My hope is Council continues to look for ways of simplifying reporting in order to better allow the community to understand Council finances. The long-term financial plan before us has addressed the desires of the community through the provision of finances on those projects that are identified by the community through the council plan as being of most importance. Many of these projects are intergenerational, the Cows Cultural Centre, the Aquatic Centre and the Bass Coast Dinosaur Trail, but to name a, through, a few, provide much needed community connection and contribute to the health and wellbeing of our residents. There continues to be a strong investment in our environment through our climate emergency plan, waste depot infrastructure and Phillip Island transfer station. I would also like to acknowledge the inclusion of the rural land management rebate that provides financial support to farmers who practice land management actions such as weed control, erosion mitigation and wildlife corridor management. The provision of funds for waste management are important as the Victorian State Government looks like introducing a bill to the Parliament this month, which will see changes that nobody seems to have details on even though waste management is a local government responsibility. The MAB, MAV have expressed their concern around the lack of transparency in relation to the bill, and therefore council will need to be vigilant that there is no cost shift, putting the financial burden of these changes on local government and our residents. The finance principles outlined in the plan will assist council in its desire to have a stable and sustainable forward financial outlook. This long-term financial plan is an ambitious one with the inclusion of big wish list items. And I congratulate the finance team for their ability to provide a pathway that offers these inclusions while making provision for possible impacts. Thank you to the finance team on a well-drafted, carefully considered and visionary long-term financial plan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Holstead. Councillor Whelan. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, look, I want to make a point. While, while the Local Government Act requires us to do a 10-year long-term financial plan, we have been doing the long-term financial plan for some years now here at Bass Coast. So I think it's an important part of our, our approach, and prudent approach, I should say. Uh, and what it does is allow a decision to be put into context. If you do this, then these are the consequences. We need to do something else to make sure the book's balanced. So it's, it's important in that sense, and I acknowledge the comments of Councillor Holstead in relation to the audit risk committee, while I exclude myself from the praise she gave them. Um, they do play a very important role in, in supervising these sorts of things, and you're quite right in saying that Councillor Holstead is very, very good people that have got uh, giving us a hand in that regard. Um, one of the things that's important to note in the long-term financial plan is it does have flexibility, and uh, because we're constantly advocating for, uh, for things, and we have a fairly heavy uh, sort of allowance in the middle of the long-term financial plan for success on advocacy in relation to aquatic centres. And of course, we're after, I say that in the plural because that's what we've got a strategic justification for. 
are only allowed to put one in the plan, but there is flexibility and it's a question of how we would adjust, uh, address and digest that if, in fact, we were ultimately successful on our, our big picture there. So it's got flexibility, and I'd like to echo uh, Councillor Holstead's uh, comments in relation to our staff. They do a brilliant job. I have great confidence in them, and uh, and and I rely heavily on them, and I'm pleased to do that because they've, they've shown that uh, their track record to be very confident. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Whelan. Would anyone else like to speak to or against the recommendation? No? Councillor Holstead, would you like to summarise or put it to a vote? Sorry, sorry. Councillor Rooks, I uh, missed you. How could I do such a thing? Councillor Rooks. <laughs> We're all forgiven, Mayor Tassari. I couldn't help but mention tracks and trails, I'm sorry. So uh, it's, it's great news in this long-term financial plan that tracks and trails are being looked after. The people of the Vasco Shire have been screaming for tracks and trails to be building more and more um, over, the, over the years, and this long-term financial plan should look after them. Um, we have over a million dollars every year set aside for tracks and trails. Uh, it's fantastic news, so um, I'm very supportive of that, and thank you to uh, the community for pushing for tracks and trails and for the staff and councillors for supporting it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rooks. Would anyone else like to speak to or against the recommendations? No? Councillor Holstead, would you like to summarise or put it to a vote? Happy to vote. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Holstead. All in favour of the recommendation as it reads? Councillors Tassari, Holstead, Brooks, Kent, Bauer, Lasser, Whelan and Lang. And against? Councillor Lark. Carried. Okay, item number H6, Domestic Animal Management Plan 2021-25, be presented by Ms Kennedy. Thank you, Mr Mayor. The purpose of this report is to present the final Domestic Animal Management Plan for consideration and adoption. Under the Domestic Animal Act, the Council must develop and implement a Domestic Animal Management Plan every four years. The objectives of the plan are to promote responsible pet ownership and protect the welfare of pets, to protect the community and environment from use of dogs and cats, and to outline Council's animal management services. The Domestic Animal Management Plan has been developed following significant consultation with the community and in accordance with the State Government Guidelines and Domestic Animal Act 1994. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Ms Kennedy. As I was here, you asked for a remover and a seconder. I uh, can't help but think Councillor was served. There's no such thing as a nuisance cat, I don't think, is it? Uh, Councillor Holstead, you have moved and seconded. Councillor Rooks. Councillor Holstead. Thank you, Mr Mayor. What an incredibly important role our pets play in our lives, and more specifically over the past two years, where it's my belief um, that they have saved lives through the companionship that they provide. Owning a pet comes with great responsibility for the health and well-being, as well as when in public spaces, the health and well-being of others, and importantly, our wildlife. I'd like to congratulate those who took time to be a part of the community engagement that has delivered a well-rounded, well-considered management plan that recognises the importance of protecting our wildlife and is prepared to provide education for pet owners who require it. In saying that, it is also my belief that most pet owners that I come, have come into contact while I walk my golden retriever have shown um, great responsibility, especially around wildlife. I see the adoption of the Domestic Animal Management Plan as the first step in a list of pet-friendly initiatives that this council should adopt to benefit the health and well-being of our community and their fairy, uh, sorry, their furry four-legged family members. I am looking forward to council providing further off-leash areas for dogs, extended off-leash beach areas with extended hours of use and the provision of dog waste bags. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Holstead. Councillor Rooks. Thank you, Mayor Tassari. There is huge community interest in the dam. There's no doubt about that, the domestic management uh, plan. Um, probably more, I noticed, with the number of submissions compared to the long-term financial plan, so it's amazing. 
Uh, dogs and cats are very important, uh, play a very important part of many people's lives. So congratulations to the community and the staff for putting together a practical and responsible plan for now and into the future. I'd like to talk to a little bit about the cat community and 24 seven cat containment. So uh, for those that need a definition of that, it is, uh, it's keeping the cat contained to within the house boundaries, whether that be within your home or within the house in a uh, cat cage or so they can't get over the fence. It's a good decision for the cats and their owners. The reason it's a good decision is because cats live a healthier and longer life if kept contained to their home property. And cats' needs can be met at home. This is supported by the experts and our, partially by our community. So I did my own research in this area. The Animal Welfare Group, the zoos, the Australian Veterinarians Association and the RSPCA all support having cats contained 24-7. A quote from the Australian Veterinary Association is as follows. The fact is, the more time a, cat, a pet cat spends safe at home, the less risk of injury or death from road accidents, biting and disease. A pet cat kept safe at home can live up to four times longer than a cat left to roam. So I think we're going to have some happy cats and some happy owners because their cats will be happy and safe. It is a change, though, and with change comes a little bit of stress. But the council's aware of this and a lot of research has gone into it and we are setting up a community group for cats to go, for the cat owners, sorry, to go through this change. And we will get there together. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Rooks. Would anyone else like to, Councillor Kent? Thank, thank you, Mayor. I'd, I'd hate to be you having to go home tonight and tell your cat he's got a hand in his front door key as there's no more uh, going out at night time. Um, but I've got to speak up for Oakley, my uh, golden retriever. Uh, I look forward to more, more work being done for the off-leash times. Um, there's been a little bit of controversy over our beaches and wildlife on the beaches. And I think that needs a little bit more clarification in the future to work, work out possibly some more sensible times, but that's that's for the future. But good luck to your cat and Claire's cat. Thank you. Thank you very much for your concern, Councillor Kent. Councillor, I'll serve. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, look, it Apart from uh, this, the DAMIC or the Domestic Animal Management Plan, um, people, we know, we know people are very passionate about uh, and get emotional about their pets and uh, affects everyone in different ways. Um, so I acknowledge the report. I think it's a, a, a good report. The cat containment one has been coming for about eight years. So um, here we are. So let's try. Uh, so we kept fighting. <laughs> <laughs> so see how we go, um, in, and I'd be interested to see uh, having a, a, an advisory group or a, a group of interested people come together and help um, do the comms on it and do the communication back to the community about it. But what I really would like to say also is that, you know, the, the council is only one year into this term, and, you know, today we've been presented with six reports, uh, very comprehensive reports, huge amount of community consultation and so I congratulate the whole um, council councillors in the, in their team effort and the and the staff and the management behind that because um, to pull this all together by the October meeting when we're just sitting at the 12 month mark after coming back after a new term I think it's incredible and and the people involved should be very proud of that achievement so I'm happy to support it. Well said, Councillor Lester. Councillor Wang. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I think um, very briefly, I think that there's only going to be one group who's going to be disappointed with the extension of any lockdowns or restrictions, and that'll be our pets, who definitely benefited mental health-wise as well from the attention that they're getting. Agreed, Councillor Wang. Councillor Bauer. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, I'd like to concentrate on two aspects of the damp at the moment. The first one is 
why do we need a business case to bring in the no-brainer of the uh, the dog poo dispensers on the poles? Why do we have to wait till 2023? Every other municipality has an off-leash area as dispensers. We do not need to reinvent the wheel. I was told we need a business case to see the best way to bring in this measure. I believe that's overkill and an unnecessary waste of money to bring in a consultant. Let me tell you the best way to bring in this measure. Get a nail, a hammer, a dispenser, and nail it to the pole. And for good measure, a chain and a landfill red bin on the pole. Job done. Oh, and don't forget in summer to pick up the red bin every week. I also believe that dogs off leash on beach periods should be from February to December. In those times, hardly anybody uses the beaches. The current starting time of April is such overkill. Walking our dogs on the beaches surely falls under the mental health policy. I find it therapeutic to be with my dog on the Cows West Beach, watching him have fun, and of course, cleaning up after him. I look forward to council officers implementing the recommendations of the Mass Coast and Phillip Island Dog Association submission. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Bauer. I won't seek clarification that I was going to seek. I'll go. Anyone else like to speak to or against this recommendation? No, Councillor Holstead, would you like to summarise or put it to a vote? Just briefly, Mr. Mayor, I uh, I support Councillor Bower in his thoughts on the damp and um, future changes for uh, this. You know, for dogs off off leash, and I'm sure that that will come before council for discussion at another time. I just want to give special mention also to the Phillip Island Bass Coast Dog Association, who have. Um, done an incredible job representing the voices of the furry four-legged um, friends of Bass Coast. And also, um, I'd like to also like to give special mention to Phillip Island Nature Parks and the Phillip Island Conservation Society, who, who I think um, have all contributed, including the Dog Association, working together to try and um, find the best way forward that addresses everyone concerns. Um, I think only time will tell whether we get it right when we're introducing and looking at um, further changes in this space. So um, for now, I think that this, this uh, domestic animal management plan is a start and uh, I look forward to future discussions with councillors around the strategies that, um, that form part of this, this document. So thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you. All in favour of the recommendation as it reads. Councillors Tassari, Holstead, Lark, Rooks, Kent, Bower, Lesserve, Whelan and Wang. Carried. Okay, item number H7, planning application 190116 uh, to be presented by Mr Sturt. Thank you, Mr Mayor. The purpose of this report is to present planning application 190116 which seeks to amend an existing Section 173 agreement, which places restrictions on the land that prevents subdivision, more than one dwelling, and restricts building outside the designated building envelope on the subject site. The application was advertised and received 14 objections. The application has been considered and assessed against the Bass Coast Planning Scheme. It is recommended that Council resolve to issue a notice of refusal to amend the Section 173 agreement for planning permit application 190116. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Stern. Can I have somebody move and second? Council Ola, sir. Um, Mr. Mayor, I have an alternate uh, recommendation. An uh, alternate recommendation. I'll just look at governance to bring it up on screen. Council Ola, sir, and if you can summarise your alternative recommendation without uh, speaking to it. Oh, yes. Yeah. Alternate. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Oh. That there we go. Is that it? Um, hold on. Uh, oh, God, I've lost it. Yes, that's it. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr Mayor, that's it. I just need to... Right, are you right for me to talk now? Um, so, so can we have uh, you move that? Can I have yeah, somebody I'm... second that uh, alternate? Councillor Kent, now you can talk to it. Councillor... Uh, 
Good, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I post that the uh, that we that the application is posted. Is, um, we amend the section one seventy three agreement in the Casarino Court cows to be allowed. Um, under that recommendation, there are there are a number of points. Do you want me to read those out, or just go straight to you the? You can go ahead and do whatever. It's your three minutes, Councillor Lister. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I, I post that we we allow the removal of the 173 agreement, and I'll speak to that. The um, then I ask councillors that this application is assessed against the the Planning and Environment Act and uh, not the planning scheme. It's to uh, amend the 173 agreement so that um, block can be subdivided into two. It's a 4,000 square metre block. I have read the 14 um, submissions that are party to the agreement and viewed the map of those submissions that show some of those um, objections are in the general residential zone and the others are in the low density residential zones, um, but all of them are within the town boundary of cows. Um, it should be noted that the two of the objections against the application have since sold their properties. Uh, letters of support now have been received from the new owners of those properties, uh, but those two original objections lodged um, for the, against this application are still being considered and haven't been withdrawn because they, um, they needed to be withdrawn from by those occupants of those previous um, objections. Uh, the residential uh, side of, um, of Manigam Road and Karasina uh, Court, uh, general residential, uh, leaving lot two to six, Castorina Court, and the other larger blocks that are in the low density residential zone and under the 173 agreement. Uh, that, that 173 agreement was put in place about 20 years ago and that is pre the town boundaries. The Phillip Island and San Remo design framework identified the settlement boundaries of cows and it was introduced via planning scheme amendment C46, part two, dated 17th of April, 2008. Uh, the only thing mentioned regarding the wildlife in the planning permit and in the original application for the subdivision only refers to the fencing to be a permeable uh, to wildlife. Um, this application only changes the size of the block, which is, uh, which is now acceptable and uh, consistent with the low density residential zone of 2,000 square metres under the current planning scheme. Uh, the applicant has uh, all the services connected to the block. Uh, the driveways are already in place, one off um, Casarina Court and the other one off Managum, which is currently used. Uh, the building envelope possibly... Nearly. The building envelope may not need to even be changed because it nearly covers all the block. There's no need for any um, removal of vegetation. Uh, this application is only um, changes the size and uh, is consistent uh, with what we're dealing with now. Uh, if the 173 agreement... I'll ask um, you to wrap it up again for a third, if you could, please. Okay. Um, as we move forward, uh, this is an infill. An infill in Bass Coast is really important. This is within the town boundaries. And um, I'm happy to ask fellow councillors to support this alternative motion. Thank you, Councillor. So, Councillor Kent. Thank you, Mayor. I don't know if I've got any more to say, but uh, look, I believe in 173 agreements. My own block of land has a 173 agreement, but I also believe that there must be room for common sense and flexibility. Uh, in the past, we've dealt with 600 square metre blocks where somebody can buy them in a new estate and come along and, and cut them in half and we can do nothing. Um, there's no common sense there. But in, in this response, one acre down to a half acre, two different entries into the blocks on two different streets. I've had a look at the area. In my opinion, it's suitable for that uh, uh, cutting into the two blocks. It can't be subdivided any further. They can't put a handful of 
apartments on one of the blocks. It's just a no-no. 2,000 metres square, that is it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kent. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this recommendation or this alternate recommendation? Councillor Bauer and then Councillor Rooks. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I've read the, also read the objections and I've also walked the site and uh, spoken to the applicant. It's a corner block and it's a greenfield site as already been mentioned. And uh, I think when the 173 was originally brought in, it had a different feel and a vibe to use the expression in those days. Uh, just briefly, quickly, I think this is a suitable uh, situation where we can remove that 173 and I support the alternate motion. Thank you, Councillor Bauer. Councillor Rooks. Thank you, Mayor Sari. Uh, I don't support the alternate recommendation. Um, when these 35 homeowners have moved into this area, they have done so under the understanding of that 173 agreement. I appreciate that an agreement can be changed. As stated in the report, it says an agreement may be amended through council and by support from all parties bound by the agreement. Clearly, this is not the case. 14 out of the 35 parties are not supportive of this change. So therefore, I um, I will be going against the recommendation by Claire, or Councillor LeServe, sorry. Thank you, Councillor Rooks. Would anyone else like to speak to or against the recommendation? Councillor Whelan. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. This is, this is a, it, it's difficult because when one looks at a section 173, you've always got to ask the question, well, why was it put in place in the first place and, and who, who, was, who was affected by it? I know if this was a, a Greenfields application today, it, it, would, it would most likely be approved. So it's not easy. It's not easy. I'm not suggesting it's an easy one. But I don't like hypocrisy either, and it's, uh, it's not for us as councillors to say, yeah, well, if it, it's okay. Well, ultimately, we vote for it one way or another. We might support a resolution. But the reason this is recommended to be not allowed is because of the disadvantage to people over an agreement. And that is the fundamental question uh, at issue here. Now, I, my view would be to avoid adhocracy, which is what I see this as, in the sense that it's looking at things in an isolated situation as distinct from the whole area. Um, I, I think that uh, it, it would be something we should talk to all of those landholders that were affected by that subdivision at the time, that were all affected by that, some bought it for that reason and therefore their interests are at stake in this, in this regard. My view would be we should be talking to everybody and, and, and looking at a more organised and in, you know, look, looking at how much community support, and I mean community support within that area, is, is in support of this change. And if that's the case, then change it across the board, not on a block-by-block -block basis. Thank you, Councillor Whelan. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this recommendation? Councillor Holstead. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have really struggled over this alternative um, alternative um, proposal by Councillor LeServe. Half of me is looking at it and saying 2,000 square metres, it's still a very large block, it can't be subdivided any further. And then on the other hand, I have concern about um, just how uh, strong our Section 173 agreements are and um, it's important I think that we uphold um, what what has been agreed to um, it, it does it does need to be taken into consideration that there are uh, people who have signed on at this agreement and expect council to uphold it I know if I had a section 173 agreement, with neighbours and then they chose to apply to council and council supported taking it off. I wouldn't be happy about that. And we've got 14 objectors here that are saying they're not happy about removing the section 173. So it's been a really difficult one, um, but I'm tending to err on the side that in order to keep the integrity of what a section 173 agreement is, 
um, that I wouldn't support the alternative recommendation at this point. I'm sorry. Thank you, Councillor Holstead. Would anyone else like to speak to or against the recommendation? No, Councillor Holstead, would you like to summarise and put it to a vote? Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. I just, um, in, just want to reinforce the fact that we do have town boundaries now where we didn't when the 173 agreement was put in place. Uh, there's some of the objections around the views of looking at the paddock over the road. Well, it's unrealistic. We talk about that all the time when we have applications to subdivide or double storeys in the coastal view. Um, Bass Coast has to maintain a 15-year land supply and there's pressure on it. We have got a growing community. Bass Coast has changed in the last 20 years. I think that this is a, a really, as Councillor Kent said, a common approach, common sense approach to this application. And um, I put the alternate motion to the councillors. Thank you, Councillor. I'll serve all in favour of the alternative motion as it reads. Councillors Lark, Kent, Bauer and Lesserve, and against, Councillors Tassari, Holstead, Rooks, Whelan and Lang, that is lost, which now brings it back to the original recommendations. Can I have somebody move and second that recommendation, please? Councillor Rooks, and seconded. Councillor Whelan. Councillor Whelan, uh, sorry, Councillor Rooks. Thanks, Major Sari. I think, um, as has been said before, uh, the people that have moved into that area on the understanding of that 173, they've made their case quite clear that they're not comfortable with this proposed change. Therefore, I, I once again support this recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Rooks. Councillor Whelan. Thank you, Councillor Whelan. Would anyone else like to speak to or against the recommendation? No? Councillor Rooks, put it to a vote. Yes, please. All in favour of the recommendation as it reads. Councillors Tassari, Holstead, Brooks, Whelan and Lane. Carried. Can I have a division, please? Certainly. Uh, all in favour of the recommendation as it reads. Councillors Tassari, Holstead, Rooks, Whelan and Lang. And against, Councillors Lark, Kent, Bauer, Lesserve. Okay, order number H8, planning application 070444B slash 1 to be presented by Mr Sturt. Thank you, Mr Mayor. The purpose of this report is to present planning application 070444B-1, which seeks to develop the land for an additional 20 rooms at the Rose Lodge aged care facility on Graham Street in Wonthaggy. The application was advertised and did not receive any objections. The proposal is before council due to the cost of development. The application has been considered and assessed against the Bass Coast Planning Scheme. It is recommended the council resolve to issue an amended planning permit for planning application 070444C-1, subject to the conditions as outlined in the report. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Mr Stern. Can I have somebody move and second the recommendations? As it reads, Councillor Lark and seconded. Thank goodness. I thought I was going to have to. <laughs> Councillor Holstead. Okay, Councillor Lark. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, Rose Lodge is a superb aged care facility and we recognise its endeavours to continuously improve care for existing and prospective clients with dementia who have very severe psychological or behavioural symptoms and cannot be cared for in mainstream aged care services. It's important we have community services that can meet their specialised needs to help reduce and stabilise severe symptoms of dementia and improve their quality of life and independence. The number of people with dementia is rising in Australia, so it's also important to help aged care services develop best practice care for all people with dementia. I, I support the re recommendation. 
Thank you, Councillor Lark. Councillor Holstead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm happy to go with Councillor Lark's commentary on that one. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Holstead. Would anyone else like to speak to or against the recommendation? Councillor Lark, would you like to put it straight to a vote? I'd simply, in closing, like to thank the Rose Lodge Board, management and staff for, for their foresight and much needed community facility. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lark. All in favour of the recommendation as it reads. Councillors Tassari, Holstead, Lark, Brooks, Kent, Bower, Laserve, Whelan and Lang. Carried. Item number H9, Basco Shire Outdoor Trading Support to be presented by Mr Box. Thank you, Mr Mayor. The purpose of this report is to seek council endorsement for a number of initiatives for the hospitality sector that will assist business to increase outdoor dining over the 2021-22 summer period. The ongoing implications of COVID-19 and measures to contain its spread have led to widespread disruption and hardship that has disproportionately impacted some business sectors. Council continues to provide support to business through a variety of measures, and this report outlines how Council may increase assistance to the hospitality sector. It's recommended that Council continue to help facilitate outdoor dining initiatives, advocate to government for funding, and provide financial support by waiving footpath trading fees for the 2021-22 financial year. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Mr Box. Can I have somebody move and second the recommendations? Councillor Holstead. And Councillor Rooks. Councillor Holstead. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. I raised this item as urgent business on the 15th of September following the issuing of outdoor dining permits by Council to our local businesses. And after an emotional conversation I had with one of our local traders, and I thank Council for their support on this. I'm in the unfortunate position of having first-hand experience with our family restaurant having been closed now for in excess of 18 months. So I understand what our business community, especially those in hospitality, have suffered through over the past two years. COVID-19 and the state government response to it has devastated small businesses with the tourism and hospitality industries suffering some of the biggest losses. Both of these industries are high contributors to the local Bass Coast economy, and therefore this stress is felt right across our Shire. Nothing will ever completely address the devastation our business community has felt, and Council with limited resources compared to state and federal governments have attempted to help by continually looking for opportunities. The 965,000 response and recovery package initiated at the start of the pandemic kicked off the journey of support, followed by securing funding for outdoor eating and entertainment packages that saw the introduction of parklets, footpath trading, and the activation of public spaces, all of which have provided some ability for hospitality to continue trading at some capacity if they felt that training uh, that trading was sustainable. And in some cases it wasn't. I thank the council officers who have recommended we advocate to the state government for, for further financial support um, for continued and increased outdoor dining initiatives. The feedback I've received has been positive with most enjoying the atmosphere that outside dining creates. It's envisaged many of these outdoor areas will spill out onto footpaths, road verges and parklands. And I'm also pleased after conversation with, conversations with officers that they have considered how this may impact on vulnerable community members by keeping, friend, uh, keeping design friendly for mums with prams, the elderly and people with disabilities. I have no doubt Bass Coast businesses will be grateful this, for the small gesture by council to return any footpath trading fees for the 21-22 financial year. I hope our businesses sense the level of community and council support to see them succeed and that we thank them for all they have endured. Thank you to all councillors for supporting the original motion and I hope you will support the recommendation before you today. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Holstead. You must have rehearsed that because that was right on three minutes to the second. <laughs> Councillor Rooks. 
Thanks, Mayor Tassari. I just wanted to add that um, in the last 48 hours, the state government has announced that they will be uh, providing grants and, and funding support towards outdoor dining and through the local councils. And by this recommendation being um, evident for our council, it goes a long way to uh, providing a strong argument to the state government that they can uh, come and support us because they'll be co-funding um, our support that we're giving to businesses. So it's a good outcome. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rooks. Would anyone else like to speak to or against Councillor Whelan? Thanks, Mr Mayor. Yeah, look, I want to support this uh, resolution. Your hospitality is so important in our area and it has really been suffering along with the arts and, and a range of those things where we're sort of disproportionately impacted. And uh, I also have, have had discussions with um, local traders who are really doing it hard and, and distressed by situations they found themselves in. So I want to say about the street trading, just how it changes the whole flavour of the place anyway and what a wonderful addition it is to our offering and how it makes the streets more friendly. And so I, I'm hoping that it, it really helps in the short period going forward and once we're out of this uh, malaise that we're bringing in through the pandemic that is something that continues here as real offering. I also have great hopes, as Councillor Rooks indicated, of the state government. And I know that we met with Minister Lean, the mayor, and I met with him last year, it was, and he was delighted with what had happened down while we were in cows at the time. Uh, and also we have a working for Victorians uh, employee with us who's gone on to become part of our full-time staff. So the response of the government in this regard has been good um, and, and I'm just hoping that they continue it and really support us going forward and allow us to continue our support of the traders that uh, have been doing it so hard and so we can get them all back on their feet. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Whelan. Would anyone else like to speak? Oh, Councillor Bowley, you had your hand up and then Councillor Kent. Yep. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I'd like to talk from my own experience here that businesses have been completely smashed by this COVID, and I welcome the uh, the response and the re report, sorry, and its recommendations. I also wish to thank Councillor Holstead for pushing this uh, initiative through, it's very much needed. I also wish to thank the council officers for putting together these recommendations and putting them forward, and I support this report wholeheartedly. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bell. Councillor Kent. Thank you, Mayor, Councillor, Councillor Bower took everything I was going to say. But again, I would like to congratulate Councillor Halstead and I would like to congratulate the council officers and the CEO. It appears that during these COVID times, Fast Coast is always one step ahead of, of everyone else, including the Metro councils. We are just doing it so well. and. Yes, we might make some decisions, but the CEO and the council officers are the ones pushing it through, doing that hard work. So I congratulate them. And look, um, maybe some high quality cafes from Yarra Council want to come down and, and set up shop down here too. All the best. Thank you. That's an old time new right there, Councillor Ken Poaching during our council meeting. Councillor Lark. Yeah, just briefly, 2020 showed us that the economy and labour mar market do have the capacity to bounce back. And Council's proposed outdoor trading support package is a timely stimulus for our hospitality operators and ailing economy. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lark. Councillor Lassert. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. And, and Councillor Lark is right. I mean, it's not just this one gesture. We The Council has worked... Uh, and the staff have worked pretty uh, tirelessly, really, to help support our business in very difficult times. Um, I just want to say that, you know, also, in as business as usual, um, often now that we're coming out of lockdown and the, the community look to our businesses, you know, you always, as a community group or a charity, hit up all our local businesses for a raffle or whatever it might be. But I think this really just shows that, Council is really committed to supporting those businesses and keeping the doors open 
And uh, in the months to come now, when we get a bit better weather and uh, tourist season kicks in, you know, the, I, I just hope that the businesses acknowledge that and um, I hope they do really well this season. Thank you, Councillor Reserve. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this recommendation? No? Councillor Holstead, would you like to summarise or put it to a vote? Just quickly, um, Mr Mayor, picking up on Councillor Whelan's um, point about the arts and the arts having been hit pretty uh, hard at this time as well, maybe we could incorporate through our outdoor dining areas a bit of arts um, and assist our, our art community along with it. Um, I agree that the state government, uh, thank you, Councillor Rooks, for pointing out that they have in the last 48 hours offered further support. And so um, once again, our staff are in front of it and they're, they're chasing those dollars and I thank them for their continued um, efforts in that regard. I just, in, in closing, would like to also um, thank the community because um, the, the feedback I'm getting from local businesses is that our community has gone out and purchased those cups of coffee and stood out in the in the cold waiting to be served um, and you know having that takeaway meal on the occasional night and I'm sure councillors probably know that pretty well um, given our roles um, so the community themselves have really got behind hospitality and we we in the hospitality industry are now just waiting um, to open our doors up again, even though at limited capacity, but we're all looking to um, the broader community to come out in droves and, you know, that you've been locked up long enough. So come out and have a, a nice meal sitting in the restaurant for a change. And um, we're really looking forward to welcoming you back. And I'm sure all the businesses of Bass Coast are. So thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Holstead. We'll put it to a vote. All in favour of the recommendation as it reads. Councillors Tassari, Holstead, Lark, Brooks, Kent, Fowler, Lesserve, Whelan and Lang. Carried. Item number H10, Bass Coast Dinosaur Trail Master Plan, to be presented by Mr Box. Thank you, Mr Mayor. The purpose of this report is to present the Bass Coast Dinosaurs Trail Master Plan. The Dinosaurs Trail is a proposed creative sensory and interactive experience from San Remo by one thank you to Inverloch. It's inspired by a local paleontologist and is 125 million years in the making and will provide the region with a world-class visitor experience. Completion of the master plan marks a key stage in development of this unique project. It provides a framework for a new regional tourism offering that complements existing destinations, infrastructure, environmental and cultural offerings. It'll draw upon a community vision to amplify Bass Coast's prehistoric past at six locations. And these key sites incorporate science, volunteering, art and culture and are expressed through a diverse range of creative experiences. It's recommended the Council adopt the Bass Coast Dinosaurs Trial Master Plan and authorise officers to progress to the detailed design phase of the project. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Mr Box. Can I have somebody move out? Second, Councillor Holstead, you're having a starring role today. And Councillor Lang. Councillor Holstead. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, Pre-COVID visitor numbers based around tourism have traditionally been one of the strongest foundations in supporting employment and the broader Bass Coast economy. The Dinosaur Trail provides an opportunity to expand on that success by drawing tourists from the island to the mainland where they can continue their experience and spend more time in the Bass Coast. More people can sometimes be interpreted as damaging to the environment. However, I've found the opposite to be true. Rather than people clamouring over sensitive habitats and sites of significance, um, providing trail offers a more sensitive approach at addressing the natural curiosity of people while offering protection. This master plan offers an inspiring vision with considerable educational value, environmental protection, creative input and economic stimulation. It creates and encourages the use of space for activities that address the health and well-being of community in a rugged and picturesque outdoor setting. Again, as chair of the Arts and Community Advisory Committee, 
I'm excited to see the inclusion of creative propositions such as nature play and sculpture. So too technology through augmented reality, virtual experience and light and projection. The dinosaur trail will trigger the imaginations of the young and of the young at heart. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Halstead. Councillor Wang. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I won't have much to add, um, but to say that it's been really great to work with the community to, to see the, the insight and as well as um, enhancing the areas to protect their concerns and the integrity of the spaces that are going to be used to develop the dinosaur trail, um, particularly some sensitive spots um, in Kilcundra and um, but all of them, having said that. And just briefly, I think I just wanted to quickly add that this is going to be a lot more than just rock smashing at the caves, um, although my kids have loved doing that for many years. Yeah, it's going to be fantastic and I wholly endorse this project. Master plan. Thank you, Thank you Councillor Lane. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this recommendation? Councillor Whelan. I just like to say that my recollection of this project started with uh, a paleontologist, Mike Cleland, from the island coming into a council chamber one day to a whole lot of very strange looking rocks, rocks. dinosaur teeth, and all sorts of things like that. But what's real, and he's done it a couple of times, but I think it was his, on his second visit, we had a change of personnel in the offices. I just want to say that grab it and run with it. And this is this is not talking, this is doing. So it's a really good project. And what I like about it, it seems a bit strange to say, but it's not on the island. And I say that from the point of view that Vast Coast is broadening, it's broadening its uh, visitor economy offering. And I think that's a really important thing. So this involves a number of towns down the coast. And I think that's an excellent thing. And look, we, when we went to Canberra, sorry to keep like mentioning that, that one, one of the shadow ministers said, he, how much his kids love the dinosaurs, and he he plans to come. You know that, that that's a re, that's a real story, and uh, and uh, that's true. My kids love the, and my grandkids rather love dinosaurs. I, I hope they my kids like a dinosaur mainly me in that regard. <laughs> but um, now this is really good. I think we're on to a winner, and I congratulate the officers for the vigour with which they pursued it. Thank you, Councillor Whelan. Would anyone else like to speak, Councillor Kent? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I just want to acknowledge um, the feedback that we've received from certain communities that have made changes in the plan, one being the uh, uh, Kilcunda community, which uh, put in significant feedback and has, um, you know, we've done some significant alterations, including the skate park and a grass area and basketball, uh, not basketball, sorry, uh, barbecue area. Love a basketball area too, but no, uh, and the barbecue area. And so, look, we do listen to the community and we've reacted to them. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kent. Uh, Councillor Bauer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Being peripherally involved with the opalized dinosaur fossicking in Lightning Ridge, I can tell you this will be an absolute boon for the Shire. And uh, you say the word dinosaur. It lights up the imagination and brings not only the adults in, but the kids just love it. It's going to be a big winner. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bauer. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this recommendation? No? Councillor Holstead, would you like to summarise and put it to a vote? Happy to go to a vote. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Thank you. All in favour of the recommendation as it reads? Councillors Tassari, Holstead, Lark, Rooks, Kent, Bauer, Lesserve, Whelan and Lane. Carried. Okay, item number H11, Phillip Island Pro Partnership Agreement to be presented by Mr Box. Thank you, Mr Mayor. The purpose of this report is to enable Council to enter into a three-year partnership agreement between Bass Coast Shire Council and Surfing Victoria to secure the Phillip Island Pro. Phillip Island Pro has been held annually in November on Phillip Island since 2016 and is regarded as an important event on the Australian surfing calendar and for its local contribution to culture, destination brand and awareness. The original partnership agreement between Bass Coast Shire Council and Surfing Victoria has now expired. It's recommended that Council authorise officers 
to enter into a new partnership agreement with Surfing in Victoria for additional three years, 2021 to 2024. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Box. Can I have somebody move and second the recommendation as it reads? Councillor Rooks and seconded. Councillor Holstead. Councillor Rooks. Thanks, Mayor Sorry. This is a great partnership we have with the uh, Phillip Island Pro Surfing event. And uh, it's an off-peak event that is held normally in November, but it's changed a little bit with COVID, but hopefully it goes back to being in November. It's a great opportunity where we get to showcase surfing here on Phillip Island. Um, we are a surfing mecca, and we should be proud of that and showcase it. Um, there are points allocated to this um, on the circuit, so it's, it's a, it's a well-respected event. And there's $10,000 equal pay for both males and females. More good news. And the economic benefit is uh, about tenfold for our community. So it's a good outcome there as well. Um, we're already co-funded with it, with um, some support from Gippsland Regional Events Acquisition Fund. So I fully support this recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Rooks. Councillor Holstead. I think Councillor Rooks summed it up pretty well. Um, Mayor Tassari, the only thing that I would add is that I have a number of surfers in my family and they're really excited at the idea that uh, this will be coming to town again. So I congratulate officers on this and look forward to um, seeing the guys out there on their boards and girls, I might add. Yes. I knew what you meant when you said it, though, Councillor Halstead, guys, as a uh, general. Anyone else like to speak to or against this uh, recommendation? Councillor Bauer. Just quickly, Mr Mayor, thank you. Uh, I'd just like to say how many surfers are, there's so many surfers on our island and how many island stickers are there if you could drive around and see them on the back of the cars. The island, it's a big part of our island, it's the surfing and our lifestyle. I just want to quickly read an email I received in, re in relation to this. And it's, it's on a broader level, though. This is a shower uh, uh, that the one person wants some showers installed at other surfing areas as well, and, I think, and fresh water, which includes the colonnades, forest caves, crazy birds, surface point, Cat Bay, Shelley Beach, which was turned off, and Wright Point. And I think it's well worth remembering that even though this is a great initiative on one level, the, the casual surfer should have some amenities as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bauer. Councillor Kent. Thank you, Mayor. Just a real quick one, just another pat on the back to our council officers, council applied to the Gippsland Regional Events Acquisition Fund and we got $30,000. So that's a saving for the council, which is a saving for the community. So congratulations for achieving that. Thank you, Councillor Kent. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this recommendation? No, Councillor Rooks, would you like to summarise or put it to a vote? Uh, only to comment on um, Councillor Bauer's email. Uh, it would be great to have those facilities available, um, but we need to talk to the Nature Park because they manage most of that land. It's not necessarily a direct council uh, role. Other than that, happy to put it to a vote. All in favour of the recommendation as it reads, Councillors Tassari, Holstead, Lark, Rooks, Kent, Bauer, Lesserve, Whelan and Lang. Carried. Item number H12, Western Port Biosphere Memorandum or MOU to be presented by Ms Kennedy. Thank you, Mr Mayor. The purpose of this report is to get council endorsement to enter into an MOU with the Western Port Biosphere. The MOU reinforces the long-standing partnership between Bass Per Shire Council and the Western Port Biosphere Reserve. As one of five member councils, that place has an important role to play in supporting the work of the biosphere and much to gain from the regional cooperation that the Foundation makes possible. For each of the four years of the MOU, the Biosphere Foundation will develop an annual business plan containing KPIs and linkages to the UN <coughs> Sustainable Development Goals that are relevant. This plan will be discussed with the five councils to maximise alignment and relevance of the Biosphere Foundation's project to council priorities. The Bass Coast contribution in 2021-2022 will total just over $21,700. For the main three years of the MOU, the annual contribution will be indexed on a yearly basis against the state government and post local government rate caps. These contributions have been included in the current budget. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Rooks. Councillor Bauer. 
Thank you, Ms. Kennedy. Can I have somebody move and second the recommendation? Councillor will serve and seconded. Councillor Whelan. Councillor will serve. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, look, I think this is a great partnership. Uh, I think uh, over the time there's been some learnings that's happened uh, in developing that partnership uh, so that Bass Coast is uh, well represented. Uh, the partnership is with um, between Bass Coast and, and six of the is a part of the six council members of the group and the Western Port Biosphere Foundation, and it's a it's critical in helping us realise our shared aspirations for the sustainable development and environmental restoration work in our region. So the and you know an annual KPIs, um, you know I think they're going that's going to be great. The support for best environmental and, uh, and management practices is uh, a really critical issue. Um, our shared goals, we're all on the same page, which is great, and addressing some of the impact of climate change and protect the biodiversity of, of our region. So I would put this to the councillors and hope they support it. Thank you, Councillor Whelan. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Yeah, look, I'm supporting this as well. I, by the council of the CERN, I was the uh, council rep there and know it pretty well. Um, we've done some interesting projects. One of the ones, water stewardship, is a, is a really interesting project about the quality of the water flowing into Westerport. I think they need to get a focus around Westerport, a big project that's certainly not that as part of the strategic plan. I think they can pull that off. Could be a great benefit to uh, Bass Coast and to the for all of the municipalities. I think that's also one of the strengths of Biosphere is the fact that it brings all of those councils together. I come across a lot of those councils also on the second uh, council advisory group, and I, I think that inter-council cooperation is particularly good, particularly as we all share that body body of water called Western Court. So uh, I'll be supporting the, the resolution. Thank you, Councillor Whelan. Can, would anyone else like to speak to or against the recommendation? No? Councillor Lasser, would you like to summarise or put it straight to a vote? Just to say, uh, Mr Mayor, that, you know, we all know the importance of the Western Port um, Bay Area and I hope that we can get the support um, to really um, help deliver on those programs that are so important to this region. So I'll put it to the councillors. Thank you. Councillors, serve all in favour of the recommendation as it reads. Councillors Tassari, Holstead, Lark, Rooks, Kent, Bower, Lasserve, Whelan and Lang. Carry. Item number H13, Port Phillip and Western Port Regional Catchment Strategy to be presented by Miss Kennedy. Thank you, Mr Mayor. This report recommends that Council formally support the directions and targets of the next Port Phillip and Western Port Regional Catchment Strategy and be listed as a partner organisation. This will enable Council to respond on all priority projects in the perspective, demonstrate commitment to a healthy and sustainable environment, and demonstrate the level of community engagement and support for the work carried out by Port Phillip and Western Port Catchment Management Authority. Council will benefit from being listed as a formal partner as this recognises council's contribution to the region and enhance opportunities to secure funding for priority projects in Bass Coast. The report also recommends that council nominate the Bass Coast Biolink Program for inclusion in the prospectus as a regional priority project. There are no financial implications for council being formally listed as a partner organisation in the Port Phillip and Western Port Regional Catchment Strategy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Kennedy. Can I have somebody move and second the recommendation? Councillor Rooks and seconded Councillor Whelan. Councillor Rooks. Thank you, Mayor Sorry, This is another important relationship that or partnership that the Council has with a, a group that specialises in the land and water. Uh, it's, it's not always possible for Council to be experts in all areas and so that's why these partnerships are so important. This group looks after the water supply, waterways, wetlands, groundwater, native vegetation, native animals, land use, soil health, agriculture, they do a lot. And so this is a really important relationship for our area since we've got such a focus on the environment. And we should be a, a partner with them because our, uh, our Bass Coast BioLinks program, which is a key part of our environmental programs, um, will get some further support if we partner up with the uh, regional catchment strategy and the port 
Philip and Western Port Region. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rooks. Councillor Whelan. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Yes, I support those comments by Councillor Rooks and emphasise the importance of our violence program and the importance of nominating it into that uh, strategy gives it greater credibility. And of course, there's never been more, in, not so much in question, but important in respect to the safe of woodlands that's, uh, that's occurring around the Western Port Ward at the moment, and that competition between sand mining and, uh, and preservation of, of, of nature. So it's important, and I think uh, while I support it being uh, included in this strategy, it's also important we included a few more of our own, including including the planning scheme. Thank you, Councillor Wheel. And would anyone else like to speak to or against this recommendation? No. Councillor Rooks, would you like to put it straight to a vote? I only to comment that I believe there's already around 90 groups that have partnered with this important strategy. So uh, we're not alone here. It's, uh, it's a very important strategy. And put it to a vote. Thank you. All in favour of the recommendation as it reads. Councillors Tassari, Holstead, Lark, Rooks, Kent, Bower, Lesserve, Whelan and Lang. Carried. Item number H14, Community Grants Program. And right at this point, I ask if uh, Councillor Bower and Councillor Lang could uh, log off and stand by your phones so don't go too far and we'll call you back shortly. Okay, so uh, item number H14, Community Grants 2021, round two, to be presented by Ms Kennedy. Thank you, Mr Mayor. This report seeks council endorsement of the Community Grants 2021, round two recommendation as presented by council officers. All categories were offered in the round, and those being general community grant, festivals, celebrations and events grant, minor capital works grant, and a climate action grant. And this category was introduced for the first time in this round. The recommendations are based on the funding criteria adopted by Council at the ordinary meeting on the 21st of October 2015 and following a Council Officer Assessment Panel process. In total, 55 applications were submitted with an overall request of $222,175 worth of grant funding. Three of these applications were for the Climate Change Grant, totaling just over $17,000. It is recommended that Council um, approve the funding of 45 projects, totaling $144,100, which is within Council's allocated budget for the program. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Mrs Kennedy. Can I have somebody move and second the recommendations as they we've read? Councillor Rooks and seconded. Councillor Kent, well, everyone was eager on that one. Councillor Rooks. Thank you, Mayor Sorry. Uh, I've got the full list here of all 55 applications in front of me, and when I was looking through them, I just get excited about it. I get excited about the fact that there's 55 community groups there, and I think about all the volunteers that are involved and all the hours that they put towards um, our community. And it, as I say, it just gives me a good vibe. These people don't get paid for the work they do, so if we can support as a council, um, and a lot of them don't have avenues to raise money either. So if we can do this through our community grants program, then that's just fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rooks. Councillor Kent. Thank you, Mayor. I'd, I'd love to release the uh, the winners, but I won't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, just, just a reminder to those who, who missed out uh, there was uh, some great quality uh, applications, but not everybody can be successful. So please put in next time for, for the next lot too. Thank you. Well said, Councillor Ken. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this recommendation? Councillor Holstead? Just briefly, Mr Mayor, because I've really said a lot in this meeting, I know. Um, I, I, find, <laughs> I, I know, um, I just wanted to say that I, I think this program is um, a fabulous program. It's one that 
all of the counsellor counsellors look forward to um, to be able to offer a helping hand to, as Councillor Rooks pointed out, all of those volunteers that give hours and hours of their personal time um, to do wonderful things in our community. This is just a, a small way in which we can support them and, and we all just love this program. So um, fantastic and I, I'm really looking forward to supporting it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Holstead. Councillor Lasseur, jump straight in there. Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, just uh, also, uh, the, and I know that we've done it through uh, Facebook, uh, officers have been communicating uh, grant writing workshops or how to actually do uh, write the grants and apply for them successfully. So I think that's a great interaction. I think it's a great communicating um, opportunity for community groups uh, to come and meet the officers, get in touch. And, you know, this is really, um, it, it is a great, I've always said it's one of the best things that we do with our community groups. Uh, and always look forward to the award night or day that we have because you learn so much about the groups and the people that are, uh, you know, with their applications. And, and I think that, that every councillor has um, has to experience that because it's really a good, feel-good thing to do. So thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor LaServe. Would anyone else like to speak to or against the recommendations? which we have seen. No, Councillor Rook, would you like to summarise or put it straight to a vote? Uh, just one question for Ms Kennedy is at a recent, uh, no, the, the sustainable principles are going to become part of the criteria for the community grants in the future. Will that be for the next round? Um, through you, Mr Mayor, yes, that is correct. So that, and that round is already open for that now and people can apply now for that round. Okay, thank you. I'm happy to put it to a vote. All in favour of the recommendation as it reads, Councillors Kasari, Holstead, Lark, Rooks, Kent, Lasserv and Whelan carried and we will now pause for a second while we bring Councillor Wang and Bauer back into the meeting. And the, um, the, the Councillors that are uh, from the uh, old return Councillors, us old timers, um, that is uh, always one of our better uh, events to go to. Uh, I'm sure we can all say that uh, the smiles on the community group's faces uh, when they're handed their, uh, their check, even though it's a, a fake check, um, is, uh, is always fantastic. So it's a great event. Back in the can day, I, I eat a sandwich and have a drink with each other. Can so, I yeah. say, um, can I say, Mr Mayor, that... Um, as a new councillor, there's a lot of that really fun stuff that unfortunately we've missed out on due to COVID-19. So as a new councillor, I am looking forward to, to being able to eventually do that and get out amongst it. Yeah, so I think it would be a very exciting night. They are always great nights. I'm back. Thanks, Jessica Bell. We're just waiting on... Councillor Lang, we'll just give her a couple more minutes. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to be responsible here, and I've, I've got you singing out on back. Your worst nightmare, mate. <laughs> yes, she is. <laughs> no, not at all, Councillor Bell. Welcome back, Councillor Lang. So can I just check, please, that uh, Councillor Bell, we can hear you, and, and I, I have already heard you once, but we'll get you to say hello. Hello. <laughs> and Councillor Wayne, you're good to go? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. All right, item number H15, a building block grant planning for expanding and improving kindergarten infrastructure to be presented by Miss Kennedy. Thank you, Mr Mayor. The purpose of this report is to seek council approval for a grant application submitted on Friday the 8th of October 2021 for the building block kindergarten infrastructure program. Approval is being sought following the application being submitted due to the short grant opening and closing timeframe. This stream provides grants for planning and pre construction work on kindergarten building projects that support the rollout of four year old kindergarten across Victoria. The grant application will fully fund the planning work for the highest priority kindergarten expansions and improvements situated on council land to accommodate growth in kindergarten places.
required due to the rollout of three year old ones in kindergarten and population growth in Bass Coast. The priority projects include Bass Valley Children's Centre expansion at Coronella, one Thady North Kindergarten refurbishment at White Road, and one Thady North East Kindergarten development, a new centre in line with the pre construction plan. The grant opened on Wednesday, the 8th of September, and councils applied for a grant of up to $150,000. Grant applications closed on Sunday, the 10th of October. Due to the short time frame of the grant application period, we are seeking retrospective approval to apply for the grant. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Kennedy. Can I have somebody move and second the recommendation? Councillor Kent. And second it. Councillor Lane. Oh, Councillor Lane. Thank you, Councillor Whelan. Councillor Kent. Thank you, Mayor. I, I thought I'd better put my hand up for this one because I'm going to get rolled in about two motions. Um, it, it, this is an interesting one that uh, we're endorsing something that's already ha happened. Um, the three-year-old kinders are on their way, uh, a great outcome for our community. There was a uh, an opportunity for our council officers and like all good council officers, they uh, took that opportunity have, a, have put the application in for $140,000. It would be a great, brave person to say, no, I I, uh, I don't endorse it and I want to return the money. So I fully support the council officers taking the initiative and putting in that application when they had to. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kent. Councillor Lane. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I won't have much to add except that we do know full well that kindergartens are very, very well used by their customers. So this is going probably by the time things get happening, um, it'll be definitely well, well utilised by its really small but very active and very destructive customers. <laughs> Destructive, I don't know about that. Um, yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, look, and, and the demand on kindergarten places has been increasing, and I think we've got to keep up with that. It's very important. We, as we said, all those early years are invaluable for children to, to learn, and uh, kindergarten's a great way to start. So I think their kids have been locked up too long, too. Councillor Lang probably acknowledges that. So I um, really uh, also just want to add that um, with uh, the priority projects, including Bass Valley Children's Centre, which I'm, I'm pleased to say has reached its capacity and now needs to expand. So I'm delighted about that. So it means that more young families are moving into our community. So well done. Thank you, Councillor Sir. Would anyone else like to speak to or against the recommendation? Councillor Halstead. I speak for the recommendation, Mr. Mayor, and um, just wanted to say again, a result of COVID-19 that we are seeing an increase in population occurring very quickly in Bass Coast. And it's wonderful to be welcoming families with their uh, pitter patter of little feet. So, um, of course, that puts a bit of a strain on those services and facilities and uh, we certainly do need to invest, and I think that our investment will be well worthwhile. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Holstead. Would anyone else like to speak to or against the recommendation? Uh, let's vote, right. Mayor. Councillor Kent, straight to a vote. All in favour of the recommendation as it reads. Councillors Tassari, Holstead, Lark, Rooks, Kent, Lesserve, Whelan, Bower and Lane. Carried. Item number H16, Instrument of Appointment and Authorisations, to be presented by Mr Mack. Thank you, Mr Mayor. The purpose of this report is to recommend that Council appoint the named officers as authorised officers under the Planning and Environment Act 1987 and to revoke authorisation to officers that no longer require it. Please note the agenda has been updated to remove one officer that was previously identified to have their authority revoked. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mack. Can I have somebody move and second the recommendations, please? Councillor Kent, the starring role, and Councillor Holstead. Councillor Kent. Thank you, Mayor. I, I, I want to be up the top. I'm going down in flames next. Uh, this is just an operational decision, and uh, so that these council officers can carry out their duties. We do this every year. 
simple as that. Thanks to you, Councillor Kent. Uh, Councillor Holstead. Nothing further to add, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Holstead. Anybody, would anyone like to speak to or against this recommendation? Put it straight to a vote. All in favour of the recommendation as it reads. Councillors Tassari, Holstead, Lark, Rooks, Kent, Lafer, Whelan, Bower and Lang. Carried. Item number H17, award of tender for the Cows Cultural and Community Centre to be presented by Mr Sturton. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I'm thrilled to present Council Contract 21008, which is to award the principal contractor for the redevelopment of the Cows Cultural and Community Centre. This was a selective tender which followed a public expression of interest process earlier this year and meets all requirements in accordance with the Local Government Act. An independent probity order was also appointed who oversaw the tender selection process. Both the tender evaluation report and probity auditor report are provided as confidential attachments in line with council policy. After this transparent process, McCorkle Constructions are the recommended principal contractor to construct the new facility. The redevelopment of the Cows Cultural and Community Centre is an intergenerational project for the Bass Coast community. Officers have worked in collaboration with the community, user groups, special interest groups and stakeholders to ensure the design meets the needs of the community for the lifetime of this building. The project principles have been guided and designed the process and ensure the project is an architectural statement, environmentally significant, inclusive, flexible and responsive to the site. The project was first identified in the Cows Activity Centre Plan in 2015 as an opportunity for a civic heart in the middle of Cows. Award-winning architects Jackson Clement Burroughs have designed a building that meets the needs of the community and stakeholders, provides an architectural statement and responds to the local context. This will be Council's most environmentally significant building. It will be a certified passive house construction, is in alignment with Council's Climate Action Plan and retains all existing vegetation on site. The new facility will boast a purpose-built performing arts theatre that will seat 250 people, a library of over 450 square metres, a dedicated art gallery of just under 100 square metres, a large multi-purpose space that can accommodate up to 400 people but also be divided off for intimate gatherings and also provides both a large active frontage to Thompson Avenue and a quiet courtyard space to the east. An independent economic impact assessment has been procured for this project and has been updated since the writing of this report. The project is deemed to have $76.4 million worth of local benefit to the Bats Coast community and provide an additional 125 construction and ongoing jobs. The great local benefits have ensured that external funding has been obtained for the project from all tiers of Australian government. $5 million from the Federal Government Building Better Regions Fund, $2.5 million from the State Government Growing Suburbs Fund, $800,000 from the State Government Living Library Fund, and in addition to this $8.3 million of funding, a $10 million state government community infrastructure loan scheme, low interest loan, which interest rate is currently under half of 1%. Construction of the new facility is programmed to commence in November 2021 and to be completed in early 2023. I'm excited to present contract 21008 to Council for the construction of this intergenerational project and recommend McCorkle Constructions as the preferred principal contractor. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Stern. <laughs> Councillor Whelan, would you like to move that uh, recommendation and second it? No, oh, well, hang on. I'm not sure who I saw first then, actually. I'll, I'll go with uh, Councillor Bamber. Councillor Whelan. Yeah, that's pretty keen to move this one. Uh, I've been on this course since. December 2016, and uh, it's been a rough ride at time, but uh, this is a major milestone, and I'm so pleased we, we, we're at this point, and soon we will see some earth being moved and, a, and ultimately a building arising coming out of the ground. It's a bit, it's a bit difficult, but uh, I have to say some difficult things because Mr. Sturt pretty well said everything else I was going to say. <laughs> but, uh, I, I think it's important in that regard to, uh, to acknowledge the contributions we've had more recently from the federal government and we thank the local member Russell Broadband for uh, his advocacy in regards to that. Uh, also, not to, not to uh, mention the state's ongoing support and early support on this would be remiss and we have 3.3 million in actual funding and the 10 million loan facility means that you really, you, you, you couldn't rent a facility for, for what that's going to cost in the sense of what we have to pay on that, on that amount of money. So that's great support at all levels of government. I think that's really worth noting that this is a strongly supported project. Um, it, it, this project isn't what we 
contemplated in 2019, as uh, Mr. Sturton has indicated, the, the uh, performing centre has gone from 150 seats to 250 seats. We tried to uh, save some costs at one stage and trim the size of the, uh, the, the gallery that's going to be there, and uh, we nearly got lynched for that. So it's back to, in fact, I think it got bigger. So uh, that was we're very good at, uh, at dealing with the, uh, our engagement. We responded, and we've delivered. We're going to deliver for that for the uh, for the gallery. It's also one of the things that, and I remember Councillor Fullerton was always strong on this in, in the last council that we need a, a convention centre which will allow us to see 400 people. And that will be there. The Great Hall will, will allow us to expand into that. So I think that's really important, the library has mentioned. But Passive House, and we, we declared a climate emergency a couple of years ago now. Passive House is responding to that. This will be an incredibly efficient, incredibly healthy uh, building, and that's something important. The museum is also something that's a really good innovation and recognises a key group within our community and our history over time, both from that so European history and of course, that's uh, pre European history that's so important with our First Nations people and our appreciation and understanding of where this place comes from. So, look, I think it's a, it's a great project, Mr. Mayor, and uh, I'm sorry that I sort of was so quick at all of the blocks that we've seen here in the to today. And, uh, and, and I encourage uh, all of the councillors to support this great project. Thank you, Councillor Whelan. Uh, Councillor Bauer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think this is the one uh, item where all the island ward councillors would jump all over each other to get on and pick me, pick me. Yeah. Be, uh, and this is what I have to say. Before I got elected in 2018, I'm on record as saying that this project was ass over tit. The old council agreed to destroy a perfectly good cultural centre before we had any plans or costings for a new building. This was deliberately done so as to wedge this current council into a building, into building a new cultural centre. We can debate the history and the reasoning of this timeline for the project until the cows come home, no pun intended. The original estimate for the new cultural building was 19 million. I, as many people thought at the time, was a big number. As the project progressed, it became apparent that was, this was going to be a state-of-the-art building in functionality, environmental efficiencies, and the ability to service the community. From a 400 sit-down gala function to a community group committee meeting of 10, the modular arrangements of the main hall suits all. The theater and auditorium will bring, culture, bring the cultural set activities and events that we could only have dreamed of. The positioning of the shire offices, the library, the museum, the art gallery are integrated seamlessly into the building. Thought and careful planning has gone into the landscaping, which will enable the building to blend into our natural environment. Our respect for our culture of the First Nations people has also been woven into the site, and we're looking forward to the input of our First Nations representatives that they will give to this project. After the revised plans were released this year, it became apparent the new cultural centre was going to be an incredible building, an icon for not only our island, but also for the Shire. It became clear to me that the return on investment was going to be huge. We will justifiably be proud of our achievement, and I have no doubt this building will be held up as a success story, envied by many, not only in Victoria, but nationally and internationally. The cost of the building has jumped from 19 million to $27,178,078 plus $1,199,000 well, $1, That's an eye-watering number. As people have pointed out, that's a whopping increase of 43%. However, put this into perspective. Firstly, credit has to go to our mayor, Brett Tazari, Miss Wasty and her team for securing various grants. Special thanks has to go to Russell Broadband, MP, for the additional federal funding of $5 million to the project. Though we're talking large amounts of money, I've been assured by council officers that we're able to finish this project with a cash injection from Shire Reserves and still be in a satisfactory financial position. To the bean counters and the naysayers of this project, I say, show me one major iconic building anywhere in the world where there has not been cost overruns. 
Even Australia's world icon, the Sydney Opera House, went way over budget, and today is the most recognisable building in Australia. There is not one of you know who will not say, let's build that thing today. Long after we've gone, and people will have to dig up our names in the Shire Archives. Yes, I hate to bring in your parade. Yeah, that's, that's it. Long after the, uh, we've gone, and people have to dig up our names in the Shire Archives, this building will stand tall. It will be admired and enjoyed by us islanders, people of Bass Coast Shire, until the penguins come home to roost. Pun intended. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Bauer. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this recommendation? Mr. Councilor Mayor, Rooks. can I just... <laughs> oh, sorry, Councillor. Councillor Rooks. Thank you, Mayor Sorry. Can I say that I share everyone's excitement thus far, including yours, Mr. Sturton? And can I say it's amazing that the Cows Cultural Centre has already been compared with the Sydney Opera House? What an <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Rooks. Councillor Holstead. No, 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 I had a little bit more to say. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> you paused. I thought that was it. Sorry. I'm learning to try to speak slowly. Hold well on. Uh, this building is a significant building, there's no doubt, in the life of the Cowes Township, but not only in the life of the Cowes Township, but also for Phillip Island and the broader Bass Coast. This will be used by all parties, all the community within the Bass Coast Shire. So let's not just think it's for, for, for cows or Phillip Island lonely. I was very lucky and honoured to be part of the project control group for the last year. And uh, I appreciate that Mr Whelan's been on it for four years. I think I got to see the best bits in the last year. But the size and complexity of this um, project and the amount of work that's gone into it has been amazing. And the professional way that this tender was um, was the process to um, appoint McCall Constructions was fantastic. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cooks. Councillor Holstead, you're good? Yeah, I'm all good. I was just going to uh, jump in and say I don't think anyone could have put it better than Councillor Bower just did. Yeah, no, I, I, it was colourful. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this recommendation? Councillor Lasser. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. And I think uh, Councillor Willen's right that we've had a, a number of um, versions of this. Uh, we've got to this point, and it, it has it is a large amount of money, but I think it's worthy of the, the community of Bass Coast. I think we deserve it, and I think that we need to absolutely show it as a an environmental example of what we're on about. And I, I think and that comes, you know, it's going to be ahead of its game and will be a, a model building. It would be no good building something that's second generation or it needs to be thinking the future kind of how it holds up for the next 30 to 50 years. So I think that we have to wait. Um, there been a number of councillors that have gone through through this whole process a number of times. So there was a bit of um, uh, chatter on Facebook about it, you know, the blowout and that, but people need to read the whole report to get a, a really good handle on it. Um, we can't just half-bake it. We just need to make sure that it's the quality building that um, the community of Bass Coast deserve. Thank you, Councillor Sir. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this recommendation? No, Councillor Whelan, would you like to summarise or put it to a vote? Just summarise, please. There's a couple of things I didn't mention. One is that uh, the change in the building came about because of the efficacy of the, in particular, the Island Conservation Society to save the trees on the block. And so, the concept changed quite dramatically at that point to make sure we could retain those existing trees. And I think we were we're so pleased we did when we see the end result of actually got mature trees around this building. Uh, the other point I had omitted to make was that this, and it was really made in some respects by others, but uh, this week's part of the Bass Coast, Bass Coast Culture Trail in the sense that this will really work in tandem with the uh, Union Theatre in Wontaggy uh, the Mines Theatre and those things, you know, these things will, will, will play as, as, as part of the, the you know, whole being greater than the sum of the parts, really. So I think we've got a great future ahead of us with this. I don't agree that it's a blowout. I, this, this is basically designing uh, a, a building that will satisfy the needs of uh, Phil Island in particular, but Bath Coast more generally. And as such, it, it'll be money very well spent. 
Thank you, Councillor Wheel. And with that, we'll put it to a vote. All in favour. Mr. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, just before you do, I think it's well worth remembering to acknowledge ex councillors Rothfield and Fullerton in there in this as well, which hasn't been done. Thank you, Councillor Bauer. And uh, all in favour of the recommendation as it reads. Councillors Tassari, Holstead, Rooks, Kent, LeServe, Whelan, Bauer and Lang. And against? Councillor Luck. Carry. And before I move on, I would just like to say, and this is, uh, this is the first time I've done this in three years, congratulations to everybody involved in uh, this project, including um, our staff, but also to the former council um, former council group who made the brave decision to go for this project before there was any funding uh, promise to the project um, and we agreed to chase it retrospectively. It was a brave decision at the time and I'm really incredibly proud that we sit here right now and I would like to also mention um, Jordan Krignawi, our, uh, our local representative who's also uh, advocated and got funding towards this project as well. Item number H18, award tender number 21029 to be presented by Mr Mack. Thank you, Mr Mayor. The purpose of this report is to recommend the award of the tender for renewal works at New Haven Soccer Pavilion, including additional funding to support delivery of this project. This project is part of Council's Asset Renewal Program and supports sport and recreation in Bass Coast. Council received $400,000 in grant funding from Sport and Recreation Victoria in support of this project. Tenders were invited through a public tender process. Council received one tender, which was $150,000 over the allocated budget for this project, which is largely attributable to escalations in materials costs. The evaluation panel have undertaken a review and believe the tender submission and price still represents value for money in the current market, and the contractor has demonstrated and proven capacity to deliver this project. The award of this tender is recommended to Council for approval. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mack. Can I have somebody move and second this uh, recommendation, please? Come on, Councillor Kent. There we go. Councillor Rooks and Councillor Ellis. Councillor Rooks. Yes, yeah, sorry, I thought the Western Port Ward councillors are going to put their hand up first, but uh, I'm very excited for this. Uh, I, I know a number of people in the soccer club quite well. Uh, this is a much needed project for the females to actually have their own change room. So it, it's critical that it's, go, it's going to go ahead. It's disappointing through COVID that um, costs have blown out, um, but we can't control everything. And it's fantastic that still over half this um, project is through external funding. So sorry for taking your uh, your comments, Western Port Ward councillors. <laughs> thank you, Councillor. Councillor Le Uh Thank you, Mr Mayor. Look. An, another exciting project and a much needed one. Um, we certainly need female change rooms uh, for these facilities. And, you know, soccer has just really uh, surprised me, the uptake of that as a sport, but it's really a popular sport right across Bass Coast. And I think this, uh, you know, this shows that we're well supporting the new Haven one. So um, that's it. Thanks, you, Councillor Lewis, sir. Councillor Lewis, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the Breakers Soccer Club was one of the first meetings that I held during my election campaign. I met with Andrea Dempsey, the secretary there, who was um, uh, really nice of her for nice of her to um, take me on a tour through the the space, and um, it, it definitely did need this upgrade. And of course. Um, provision of female change rooms was absolutely necessary. Um, what the girls were having to get changed in was really quite embarrassing. Um, so I, I hope that this is the first of many upgrades across the Shire when it comes to female participation in sport. There are a number of um, sporting areas that uh, have seen an increase in female participation and yet we're, we're yet to catch up on all of those changing room facilities. So I congratulate the club and the committee for all the work they've put in and for not giving up. Um, sometimes you have to just keep um, banging the drum and the committee's done a great job at doing that and I congratulate them. This is fantastic news. So I'll be supporting the recommendation. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Holstead. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this recommendation? Councillor Kent. Thank you, Mayor. I'm bitterly disappointed. I thought I was going to get run over. 
Um, look, I, I just want to put a word in for this club. I've, I've had quite a bit to do with them. In the past, they have uh, uh, greatly supported uh, the family violence uh, situation. Uh, they're they're anti-alcohol. They're they're pro-family. That they are just they, they support in the community what what I appreciate. I really do. So uh, my full support goes to this club and what they're achieving. Thank you, Kent. For Kent, would anyone else like to speak to or against this recommendation? No, Councillor Rooks. Would you like to summarise or put it to a vote? I uh, just want to give Andrea Dempsey the credit she deserves. She's the president um, of the Phillip Island Soccer Club, sorry, the Breakers Soccer Club, not the secretary. She has been for a number of years and does a great job in that role. That's okay, Councillor Halstead. <laughs> and put it to a vote, please. All in favour of the recommendation as it reads, Councillors Tassari, Halstead, Lark, Rooks, Kent, LaServe, Whelan, Bauer and Lane. Carried. Okay, that's it. Yeah. Brings us to the stat reports. Um, can I have somebody move that we adopt the items I1 to I3 in a block? Councillor Whelan and seconded. Councillor Bauer, all in favour. Councillor Tassari, Holstead. Lark, Rooks, Kent, Lesserve, Whelan, Bauer and Lang. Carried. Would anyone like to speak to any of the reports? Councillor Lesserve. Just a, a point of clarification, Mr Mayor, on, uh, on the report for councillor uh, informal meetings of the uh, councillor's report on uh, page 20 and 21. Just um, the Lang Lang Proving Ground one, did you attend that with us? Lang Lang Proving Ground. 15th of the 9th. 15th no. of the 9th. Well, is, that got... went, is that when you went for a drive around the track? Yeah. No, I wasn't there. Uh, it just says on the report that you were in attendance. Can we just have governance check that, please, so it's correct in the minutes? Thank you. Will do. No, I wasn't there. Um, Mr. Mayor, this informal meeting of councillors was on the 15th of September, which was after the council meeting on that day. If that helps. Oh, I, I didn't go to one way improving grants. No, no, it wasn't that. It was so Kevin. Oh, I was That I was there. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lasserv. Councillor Whelan. I'd just like to so, point out respect to contracts awarded report that uh, the Countess Corshaw Rotunda is looking uh, at closely. And I'm pleased about that. Thank you. Anyone else like to discuss any of the reports before we No? Okay, can I have a, a, recommend, a recommendation or someone adopt the recommendation that we uh, the items I1 to I3 be adopted. Councillor Whelan and second of Councillor Bauer. All in favour? Councillors Tassari, Holstead, Lark, Rooks, Kent, Lesserve, Whelan, Bauer and Lane. Carried. Okay, so that brings us, oh, sorry, any urgent business? I have none. That brings us to the end of our meeting. So I, the, next me, uh, the next meeting will be held virtually on the 17th of November, 2021, commencing at one o'clock, and it will be live streamed publicly, and it will be to vote on our next mayor. So with that, if this could be my last meeting as mayor, I would like to just self-indulge for a couple of minutes while I do a couple of thank yous and, and goodbyes. So, um, first of all, I will start off with uh, saying it has been an absolute honour to be the Mayor for Bass Coast Shire Council for the last three years. Um, it, it's been an amazing experience and the, the opportunities that are, it has been presented to me to represent the community has been incredible. To the staff um, for their amazing support, I say thank you. 
Um, the effort and the pride that they show in the brand is really, really quite incredible and, and it has just grown amazingly since uh, we uh, awarded a, a new CEO position uh, almost three years ago. To the two council groups that uh, I have uh, been lucky enough to be mayor of, um, the former group, uh, I say thank you so much to them and to, uh, in particular, Councillor, Councillor Rothfield, who was a uh, amazing, um, I won't, won't say mentor of mine, but she was an incredible lady to be a deputy mayor to for two years. I learned so much from her and um, I still call every one of them friends. I say thank you to them. And to this new group of council uh, in the last 12 months will be it on screen and we haven't had that chance to build the rapport that uh, the former group had. Uh, I have enjoyed uh, my time with all of you guys as well and uh, I look forward to being able to uh, actually meet in a room and uh, and have a chat face to face. Um, to the assistants that I've had, the, my assistants, and I won't name them because I'll forget someone, but they've been amazing um, and they do, uh, if it's possible, make me look good. Um, so thank you to them. So the two CEOs, uh, Paul Buckley, first of all, um, thank you so much to Paul. He was an amazing person to uh, deal with. And to Ali Wasty, who's sitting beside me right here, um, an incredible CEO and uh, one that uh, if you have the opportunity to see her in the room with other councils and dignitaries, they all look up to Ali Wasty and we're very, very lucky to have her as our CEO. And la lastly... To my family, um, thank you so much for the support that they've given me for three years. I've spent a lot of time uh, in, well, the first 12 months away from home and in the last two years sitting in my bedroom at my desk. <laughs> um, so I thank you for the, the support that they've given me, in particular my wife, who uh, I have said on more than one occasion, backs me to, do, uh, to be selfish and to chase my own dreams. I say to her, she's the most amazing woman and thank you so much to her. Um, I won't say that uh, this is it, um, but I will say that more than likely this will be it. So uh, in the uh, immortal words of uh, Barack Obama in, uh, in his last speech as President of the United States, Tassari. <laughs> and that's it. Well done, Mr Mayor. A vote of thanks to you. Thank you so much. Everybody, thank you for, for watching. It's been a long, long meeting. Um, some amazing decisions, and I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, see you all in uh, one month's time. Thanks, uh -oh. councillors. I think I've forgotten something, have I? Sorry. <laughs> oh, I now announce this meeting is closed. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> we'll pause for a minute while we wait for the voice from above.